highly anticipated space RTS game needs more time before it can fully mobilize. Hooded Horse is making one more adjustment to its upcoming release schedule, by announcing that Stutter Fox Studios' highly anticipated space RTS Falling Frontier will be delayed until 2025. While the development of the exciting space strategy game has progressed well this year, from revamped combat mechanics to an exciting new visual identity powered by a new hire, events beyond the control of the studio have caused things to slow down in recent months. In order to give the team time to recover, reorganize, and ensure that the project has plenty of runway to meet its ambitions, Falling Frontier's new release window now shifts to the 2025 calendar year. Indie development is incredibly difficult, especially for small teams, says Hooded Horse CEO Tim Bender. We're so proud of what Todd and Stutter Fox Studios have achieved so far, and are fully committed to Falling Frontier. We can't wait to show more of the game to fans, but we also want to make sure it has the time it needs to be done right. There will be more to share on Falling Frontier next year. Falling Frontier will release in early access for PC via Steam, GOG, and the Epic Games Store. A press kit is available. Hooded Horse is a publisher of deep strategy and tactical games with people and partners worldwide. Starting in 2019 with a single title, Hooded Horse's portfolio has grown to 28 games and counting. Our goal is to empower and support developers in doing what they love so that they can create world-class experiences for their audiences. From the distant past of Manor Lords and the haunted woods of Against the Storm, to the depths of space in Terror and Victor and Falling Frontier. Stutter Fox Studios was founded in 2019 in Melbourne, Australia, by Todd Darcy, focusing on delivering entertaining and unique games. The DNA of the studio is to create experiences driven by passion and determination. The studio's first title is Space RTS Falling Frontier. Out of all the RTS settings we've seen over the years, space remains, for us, absolutely the most thrilling. Ever since Homeworld got its hooks in us over 20 years ago, we have never lost the craving for big spaceship battles in the uncaring void of space. Falling Frontier then, is very much our kind of thing, but it's approaching things quite differently when compared to the Relic Classic, as is clear from the latest, extremely meaty trailer. It's a harder brand of sci-fi, grounded by ship designs evocative of real-world naval designs, where everything looks utilitarian and crafted for a specific purpose. It still looks gorgeous, mind you. This goes beyond the aesthetics, you'll also be managing logistical conundrums and supply chain issues, and worrying about how to properly position your ships to maximize their damage potential. Falling Frontier was pushed back to 2025 a wee while ago, but developer Stutter Fox Studios still wants to show off how the game's been developing, teasing what we can expect when we finally get our hands on it. When I set out to create Falling Frontier, I had this idea of what the world looked like, Stutter Fox founder Todd Darcy told. It had modern wet naval warship aesthetics but was presented in a grounded sci-fi way. I also had a direction for how I envisioned the player would interact with the world. I always wanted it to have an augmented environment feel that helped communicate that the player was indeed the commander of a task force in a huge battlescape. I feel as though Falling Frontier is now meeting all of my hopes and dreams and is indeed stepping into a space beyond what I could have ever imagined. The trailer gives us a look at a quartet of sleek new frigates, each with distinct roles. The Beric, for instance can act as a spotter, helping out other ships when they're blasting vessels with long-range missiles. As a bonus, it can also lay mines and conduct search and rescue missions. The Fuzz Lane, meanwhile is a sneaky frigate thanks to its small sensor signature. It's got added utility too, thanks to an optional cruise missile attachment and drone bay. If you're looking to find sneaky ships rather than deploy them, that's where the York comes in, it's a scout, but with upgrades that include additional sensors, making it even better at spotting enemies. Finally there's the Coventry, which you'll use to escort other ships, taking advantage of its heavy armor, for its glass, and firepower. Thanks to the ship designer, these vessels can be used in a bunch of different ways, despite their distinct roles, by changing their internal and external modules, which can also change their silhouette, installing a variety of turrets, with each ship boasting unique turret based designs, and playing around with their modular weapon designs. We are a huge fan of this style of ship combat too. Unlike the frenetic dance of Homeworld ships, it's incredibly slow and tense, but certainly not lacking in grace. Basically, if you like seeing ships duke it out in the expanse, you're gonna dig it. Planets can also be attacked, and near the end of the trailer we see both an orbital bombardment and ship debris plummeting towards the planet, where it explodes. One of the things we really loved about Homeworld was the radio chatter, and that's present in Falling Frontier too. The chatter is dynamic, and grounded in the use of the NATO alphabet when referring to ship designations. It's all very serious and our kind of nonsense. 
There's more to the war than exploding ships, so we also get to take a peek at the aforementioned logistical side of things. You can see a Sukula mining barge slowly unloading its cargo assisted by smaller vessels, all of which grab onto the containers and then jet off down to the planet. It's only once they arrive that they can be used, so presumably that will make the barge something of a target for enemy attacks. Later in the trailer we get to see the big picture, where connections between worlds are made to create supply chains. We confess we have a bit of a supply chain fetish. It's a shame we won't be able to get our hands on this until next year, but thanks to the trailer we have got a much clearer picture of what Stutter Fox is aiming for, and I'm pretty stoked. Although the game has been delayed until 2025, we're still getting news about Falling Frontier, a space RTS from publisher Hooded Horse and developer Stutter Fox Studios. This trailer covers the core gameplay loops of Falling Frontier, such as managing logistics chains and configuring patrols, as well as a look at the ship designer and new levels of customization. Four new ships are featured in the trailer, such as the Beric Frigate, designed for observing and can also lay mines if the right module is installed, and the Fuzzlane Frigate, which specializes in stealth, with the option of having missile pods and support drones. The game has also received a visual touch-up in several areas, such as the game's UI, ships being sent up and resources being sent down to planet surfaces, and improved visuals for FTL jumps. It may be a little while before we get to try Falling Frontier, with the release date for early access currently set at 2025, but hopefully, the additional time the team is taking will help them reach the standards they've set for the game. Are you looking forward to Falling Frontier? It feels like the space RTS genre was popular 20 years ago but has died off in recent years. Slated for a 2025 release on PC, Falling Frontier is still one FTL jump away, but developer Stutter Fox Studios and publisher Hooded Horse have just published another extended look at what the upcoming space RTS game will have to offer, and with almost 14 minutes of gameplay, there's a lot to look at. Sporting a newly unified and really sleek looking UI, Falling Frontier definitely has a sci-fi look to it across all sections of the game now. Aside from that eye candy, the Might of Mars trailer showed off four new ship types. The Beric class frigate is a scout ship that can lay mines, if equipped with the right modules, making it perfect for keeping watch on your borders. The Coventry class frigate is an armed escort ship for your convoys, while the York class combines some of those defensive qualities with the sensors of the Beric class. Finally, the Fuzzlane class frigate is a stealth ship equipped with missiles and support drones. In the trailer, we got to see a look at the ship designer, where players can customize the modules installed on each of these ship classes, tailoring their capabilities to their needs and tastes. Work on some really immersive features has been done as well, resource pods are being unloaded in space and then sent down to a planet's surface, after which they get added to a player's pool of available goods. Ships too first need to enter orbit after being built planetside. As always when Falling Frontier is the topic, the comparison to the Expanse is an easy one, in terms of how many of the ships look and how combat seems to play out, the game really brings home those same vibes of a very grounded sci-fi experience. But there's some more fancy stuff as well, those new animations when making FTL jumps? Do our eyes deceive or are these ships ripping a hole into reality to enter and exit the warp? There's a little dose of Warhammer 40,000 in there for sure, and we love it. Speaking of which 40k surely doesn't have a trademark on orbital bombardments, but when that ship let it rain missiles on the poor colony below at the end of the trailer, that screamed exterminators to us. Falling Frontier is a science fiction real-time strategy game in which strategic planning and logistics are crucial in trying to dominate a vast procedurally generated star system. Build your own ships, disrupt your opponent's supply chains, lay minefields, set up outposts for scouting, and surprise enemy forces lurking in asteroid fields and nebulas. The new reveal trailer shows a Sukula-class mining barge for gathering resources. The ship is said to be the first of numerous new spaceships that will be included in the final game. In addition to the gorgeous graphics, we can also look at new mechanics, such as a tactical waypoint system, collision physics, and obstacle avoidance. The team promises to present more ship variants in the coming months. The game is a revolutionary combination of space simulation and sci-fi RTS and also uses the 4x strategy, where construction, discovery, logistics, and combat are the main aspects. You'll build colonies, orbital installations, and spaceships for trade and military operations while discovering and exploring new planets and interstellar anomalies. Indeed, you won't be alone. Rivals from past colonial wars between Earth, Venus, and Titan, as well as other factions, are also in your solar system. Falling Frontier is planned as early access title for PC and will be released via Steam, Epic Games Store, and GOG. Unfortunately, Stutter Fox Studios couldn't in the trailer, we got to see a look at the ship designer, 
where players can customize the modules installed on each of these ship classes, tailoring their capabilities to their needs and tastes. Work on some really immersive features has been done as well. Resource pods are being unloaded in space and then sent down to a planet's surface, after which they get added to a player's pool of available goods. Ships too first need to enter orbit after being built planetside. As always when falling frontier is the topic, the comparison to the expanse is an easy one, in terms of how many of the ships look and how combat seems to play out, the game really brings home those same vibes of a very grounded sci-fi experience. But there's some more fancy stuff as well, those new animations when making FTL jumps? Do our eyes deceive or are these ships ripping a hole into reality to enter and exit the warp? There's a little dose of Warhammer 40,000 in there for sure, and we love it. Speaking of which 40k surely doesn't have a trademark on orbital bombardments, but when that ship let it rain missiles on the poor colony below at the end of the trailer, that screamed exterminators to us. Falling Frontier is a science fiction real-time strategy game in which strategic planning and logistics are crucial in trying to dominate a vast procedurally generated star system. Build your own ships, disrupt your opponent's supply chains, lay minefields, set up outposts for scouting, and surprise enemy forces lurking in asteroid fields and nebulas. The new reveal trailer shows a Sukula class mining barge for gathering resources. The ship is said to be the first of numerous new spaceships that will be included in the final game. In addition to the gorgeous graphics, we can also look at new mechanics, such as a tactical waypoint system, collision physics, and obstacle avoidance. The team promises to present more ship variants in the coming months. The game is a revolutionary combination of space simulation and sci-fi RTS and also uses the 4x strategy, where construction, discovery, logistics, and combat are the main aspects. You'll build colonies, orbital installations, and spaceships for trade and military operations while discovering and exploring new planets and interstellar anomalies. Indeed, you won't be alone. Rivals from past colonial wars between Earth, Venus, and Titan, as well as other factions, are also in your solar system. Falling Frontier is planned as early access title for PC and will be released via Steam, Epic Games Store, and GOG. Unfortunately, Stutter Fox Studios couldn't keep the initial release in the summer of 2022 and moved it to 2025. However, the new trailer doesn't reveal an exact release date yet. On Valve's platform, it is only stated that the game is planned for 2023. Hopefully, further reveals from the developers will provide us with more details.